So folks, how do you do the more complicated Bezier curves for round uh, subjects and get rid of the background? Let me show you. Go to Photoshop, I say File, Open, and I'm going to pick these, let's Cherries Bright here. And so here are some cherries that I shot. And I, I, you know, I'm not going to be able to get rid of this background because it varies. There's no hardly way to do it that I know of other than using a Bezier curve. So I'm going to try to do this quickly and simply. I'm going to grab a pen tool, but actually first I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see these better and follow the curves. So the way the Bezier curve works is a little tricky, but if you click on the pen tool and you get to an area here, like say a corner or something, or anywhere you want to start really, but on the edge of what you're trying to select, if you click and click there and then go a little bit forward, you don't want to go too far because the curve has some limitations, but it, it's a good way to do partial curves. So I'm going to go about this far down the cherry here and I'm going to left click and hold and then I'm going to drag. And as I drag, you can see what happens. You pull this leg out. If you go this way, it gets more acute. And you go this way, the curve stays flat. And you can pull left or right, and it affects the curves. It just takes a little bit of getting control. It takes maybe about 20 minutes to, to get your hand to want to do it right. So I've pulled to a point here where that curve looks pretty good, and I'm going to let go. Now, there's a thing here called picking up the path. And uh, if I don't do this, and it does some weird things, with the curve. So I'm going to show you what I do. I hold the Option key down. I think it's also Option on the PC. I'm doing a Mac right now. But when you see that little arrow, that little, that looks that little below the pin there, that little pointer thing, a little arrow looking thing, that means you've picked up the uh, path, which is what you want to do. You click on that. Then you can go forward and again another partial bit of the uh, of the curve. I and mean, you know you can see, you'll see you'll you'll get to know. Uh oh, Command Z. Actually, let's go back to your own history. I've got the history open on this because sometimes this can happen. I need to get your history. Just go to Window and open up your history. I'm going to hold my Option key down again. Do that. Oh, and I just put a new anchor point down. Let's go back to Pick Up Path. Option. And I have picked up the path. Okay. So I'm going to go down to here. And I want to pull again. Make sure you pick up the path. Pull it. I made that a little more complicated than it needed to be. Let me hit, hold the Option key down again. Click there. You see i got the little bitty pointer. All right, now I'm going to let go of the Option key, and I'm going to go forward to another place. Click, and I'm holding down left key, or left click down, and pull till I get that properly uh, made, that little curve there. Hold the Option key down again. Click. Go forward. I see the corner of a cherry in there. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to drag upward and over and get my curve where it's about right. It only takes a little bit of practice to do this. Now, see, i got plus there. If I were to click on that, it would totally screw this thing up. Watch this. So I say I want to go here and do this. Look what it does. That's the weirdness you don't want to get is that right there. The only way to get rid of that is to go back to your add to your new anchor point. And so I'm going to go back to that again, and now I can pick it up again. That's why I leave the history open sometimes when I'm working with this. I'm going to click the Option again. There we go. And I can go across here and put a little bit of a curve on that one. Hold there again. I got my, picked up my path. No, I hit a new anchor point. Go back here. I'm going to hold my Option key down. That time I got it. It says Pick Up Path. I'm going to go forward a little bit. And here we go. Let's get that curve in. Again, I've left clicked. I held down and pulled. Go back here. Hold the Option key down. I'm going to go a little too far this time and show you how the, how that this doesn't work sometimes just so you see it. So let's say I pick too much of a curve here and I go trying to make that curve. And you'll find out right quick, uh oh, I'm going off the screen. Ah, crap, I can't seem, you know, this, you just, you can't make, sometimes you bite off more than you can chew with this. So I'm going to go back to pick up point. <laughs> I want you to see that you don't want to go too far with these. You want to go little, little segments about like that. I would say about 30 degrees or so of the round object you're trying to do. And then you can pull and you can get it to settle in really nicely. So I'm going to do Option again and click here. Again here. Looks like I can get about that much. I think I can. There we go. And I'll do the Option again and again here. I know this is getting a little boring. I might just speed this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of the stem though here. We see there's a little bit. I picked up the path. There's a little bit of curve right here. So let's go ahead and get that little bit of curve there. All right. Uh -oh, and I think I did it right. Yep. We're going to go up by grabbing that bar. Yeah, it's got some curve here. Let's go a little farther. All right. 
hold the key down again. That's pretty straight, so I'm actually going to do some straight here, okay? I'm not going to try to mess with curves. I'm just going to like click and go, go fast. And there we go. Now we're cooking. These portions like this, since they're a little bit funky shaped and all anyway, it doesn't hurt if they're just a little bit not fall, following. Yeah, it's, here again, it's, it's whatever your use for this is. If you wanted this to be blown up the size of something you'd put on the side of a truck or something, or a great big old poster picture, you might want to get real granular with how you do these selections. A lot of times, if it's something real simple like this, I'll just go ahead and use the uh, this and do it. Now, I've definitely got a curve here, so I'm going to go ahead and try to try to get this curve with the bezier. And I'm going to have a little bit of fringing there. I'm going to have to take an eraser and work on that just a little. Hold the Option key down. There we go. Got a little curve here. Go over here. You see what I'm doing? I'm just going forward, clicking, pulling a little bit till I get the curve that I want. Clicking again. And doing segments. We're almost finished. I'm gonna pull this down so I can see my end point. Actually, my end point is right there. So we'll do this and pull that. And we're almost done, but not really. We got we got a little bit more to do. So I'm gonna go back over here to paths. I'm clicking on the paths so I can see the path. I'm gonna click on this, and you can't see it's off the screen, but right here it says make selection. So I clicked on the little hamburger, going down to make selection. There we go. And I've made a selection or getting ready to. Say OK. I go to Layers. I do a Command C to copy. Command C to copy, or you can go up here and say Edit Copy. Doesn't matter. And a Command V to paste, or you can go up here and say C Paste is Command V. So there we go. Now I've got cherries that are isolated, no background, but I got this thing in the middle here. I got a cherry in the background, so I got to get rid of that. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this background. I don't think we even need it. I'm gonna click that and say Delete Background. Yeah, I'll get rid of that. So now I'm gonna get rid of this background here. So I'm going to click again with the, the with the pen tool here. Got it selected. I'm going to click here and probably down to here. I don't even know if I need to curve that. This probably does need a little curve. Do that. Option. Click. Move forward. I'll let go of the option and move forward. And that's pretty good. I'm going to do an option here again. I did put a little curve on that. I'm doing straight uh, edits again here. I get to this point and I'll put another curve in to right here. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just left clicking and pulling until I get happy with it. Then I'm going to click on the uh, button again here. I just did wrong again. Go back to here. And I'm going to make sure I get over that. Hold my, there we go. Hold my Option key down and click. Now I've got something I can work with. And now we got that. We'll hold the Option key down again, and we got down to here. Put that little bit of a curve in there. I didn't do the best job in the world on this, confessedly. Look back to Paths. Go back to here. I'm going to make selection. Okay. I'm going to hit Delete. The Delete key on my keyboard. Boom. And there we go. And now if I do a, if I do a Command Zero, that's going to show me the full size. I've got it. And let's say I want to. Let's, so let's say one thing I didn't say earlier about the other ones. First of all, I'm going to do a Command D to get to unselect that. Command D. So now I'm unselected. Now I've got a cherry that I can move around with no background. And uh, so let's say I want to save this and for f for future use. Just say I'm going to need cherries on a lot of different things. You want to save it as Photoshop so that you've got your extra, uh, so that you've got your transparency feature. I'm going to go ahead and crop this. So I clicked on the crop button here, and I'm just going to get rid of all the extra I don't need. There's really no data in that so it's not really making the image smaller or you know, was, you know fewer megs or anything but I just like to have mine clean I don't need all those extra pixels so now I've got these cherries I'm gonna say file save and I'm gonna save them as just a Photoshop file so I'm gonna call these cherries trans cherries transparent background if I could type Uh, so save. I'm saving it as a PSD, as a Photoshop. So now, so if I open up this background or something here, first of all, I'm just going to do a Command C or com Command yeah, Command A, Command A, and it selects everything. Command C, and I've just copied those cherries. So now, if I want to open up something like a background here, 
got this background water that I got from, uh, this is from uh, Wallpapers Wide, a great place to go get backgrounds if you want to, kind of royalty free things are very cool. Now, and these cherries are going to be much bigger than that. What I might do, image size, I'm going to make this bigger instead of being 20, I'm going to make this like 5,000 pixels. Boom. So now the water is big, now I can do Command V and the cherries don't totally blow it out of the water, does it? I'll blow it out of the water, interesting. I can say edit, transform, scale. And I can transform, I'm going to do a Command Zero again, so I can see, oh, that's actually not bad. I don't know if I need to take those down. So there we got our cherries in the water. And if I needed to, you know, soften some edges or something, I still might take the uh, eraser tool or something here. So I've got 33 selected here on the size. Might go a little bigger than that, something like that. And then if I needed to, if I'm on, if I'm on the right layer, if I'm on a cherry layer, I don't like this darkness here. I can go ahead and get rid of a little bit of that, see, like so. I think I went a little too far with that one. But there you go. You see kind of how you can do it. A lot of times I'll soften these hard edges if I've got something like kind of like this stem up here or something. I don't want it to be quite so so harsh or something, I might do that. So there you go, that's how you would do it. And then you can, of course, you can go, since you got them isolated, anything, any change you make to these cherries isn't gonna happen to the water. You can do image, adjust, brightness, contrast, and you can brighten things up, change the contrast or something, whatever you wanna do, make them pop a little better. It really doesn't matter. You've got the sky's the limit when you can do stuff like this. You can uh, make, you can copy the cherries, of course, and, uh, and move them around and have multiple cherries on the page there like that. So there you go, folks. That's how I isolate backgrounds. And again, I've got a little bit of a fringe here. As I see these things, I always see things I might want to change just a little bit. And so I might get soften a little bit of that edge up there on the top of that like so, make it more believable. And there may be more elegant ways to do this, but that's my sort of way. When you get good at it, it's very fast. It doesn't take long to do. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like.